And here's what I'm going to do is my name's Eve from Ethercade, and today I want a little bit of a different video. I want to discuss why the recent announcement, the recent announcement of the Owl's Awakening slash Cathedral cartridge actually legitimizes Evercade as an actual platform. Now, what I mean is in in obviously the system, Cathedral has been confirmed to be the first game released on a physical cartridge for Evercade. Which was native on the system. Now we do know there was another game it was called like Fairy Fate, Fatal Fairy or something, and I believe it was a hidden BS game, right? But this is the first game on an actual Evercade cartridge that runs on you know natively on the Evercade. Now the reason this is a big deal for a lot of uh, Evercade collectors, a lot of Evercade fans, is because a lot of people, first of all, they they just kind of knocked Evercade when it was first announced, first came out uh, as oh it's an emulation machine just emulation it's not actually a legit console it's not a legit platform all the games are just emulated from another system and technically that is true a majority of the games are emulation however with blaze now you know getting games actually running natively on their system it opens up a lot of more you know a lot more options because now games that are made for modern platforms can be ported to Evercade if the game is you know if the if the Evercade is powerful enough to actually run those games. You know, some games obviously I've spoken about on the channel obviously, stuff like Combinera would probably run run on both the VS and the EXP as well as the handheld possibly. You know, modern Atari games in general would run pretty well. There's some indie games like Cuphead and whatnot that could run pretty well on these systems. As well as you know as well as, you know, them talking to indie devs who made some homebrew games for like retro systems and actually ask them, Hey, can you port this to Evercade? You know, opens up a lot more options to both players and you know developers, because now if you want to play some of these modern games, that they could potentially get a release on the Evercade uh, on physical media. Now, obviously, I, I've made a lot of videos on my channel talking about games I want on Evercade, whether they be emulation based or real game, or well, not all real, but like you know actual ports. And the fact that we have native games that is actually something that excites me really <laughs> quite a lot, because now we can just basically get any indie game if it's able to run on Evercade, you know the uh, the limits now of it has to be on you know one of basically anything from ps1 backwards basically gone however the one issue is obviously the game needs to actually be able to play on Evercade and play wow well. because yeah they can fix it later on with a patch on vs whatever but that will ruin the experience for a lot of us you know we want get your physical cartridge for the physical media for example, one um one game that I would like to see was Rise of Ether, which is a if it's like a Super Smash Bros. like fighting game. Uh, I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great to play on VS. You know, you got four controllers. Like, sure, you wouldn't really able to do online play yet, but if that was ported, great. Same with a game like Shovel Knight. If that could run, great. Yeah, you know, would be a great option. A bunch of the modern Atari games. There's so many options now because of the native games, and legitimizes Evercade as a platform. Because now it's not that console looks like it has cut. It's not that Chinese knockoff console that has cartridges now. Now it's the, you know, actual gaming platform from Britain, which has physical media, which has physical games on it that's running legit on the system. And also it brings in tons of options for developers because now developers can go into the code and they can get familiar with the code of the Evercade systems, and they can just put more games to Evercade in the future. And it's great for for consumers because then they can be like, hey. You know, I want to play some games that aren't, you know, based on, you know, or, you know, that aren't retro. I want to play some modern games on Evercade. And they can just find some little indie games that have been ported to Evercade. And it also opens up options for companies like Bitmap Bureau, who've made games like 88 Heroes and what was the one? And Final Vendetta, which those games aren't on Evercade. And they weren't even made for retro systems that I know of. They, I think they were made for modern consoles. So Bitmap Bureau can now go into those games and develop those games for native ports on Evercade, which be which is actually quite huge for Evercade collectors and as well as developers. And obviously the more games we got on Evercade, the bigger the platform becomes, the more interest you get from more developers and you know the more interest you get from other consumers who will then pick up the Evercade. And it's just great. It's a great little thing for everyone involved. Because Blaze gets more games, so they sell more consoles and sell more copies, meaning to more revenue to then make more systems and more games. Then you've got the developers who sell more copies of their games. They can use that revenue to then, you know, make more games. Then you get consumers who don't get new games to play. 
so everybody wins. Anyway, guys, that's just my two cents on this matter. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments down below. Do you think, you know, this is a this is a win for Evercade? Do you think this is a win for consumers? Do you think this is a win for developers? Because native games can kind of change the game for Evercade. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I've been Ethan from Ethercode. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Try to hit 200 subscribers by the end of the month. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.